I want to bring in royal commentator Tim Ewart and Susanna Lipscomb, British historian, author, and broadcaster as well, to talk more about this incredible news coming out of Kensington Palace. Um, if you will, um, bear with me for a moment, because I just want to refresh folks on some of the statements that we got from Kensington Palace since the beginning of this ordeal uh, with the princess. On January 17th, we received a statement saying, Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales, was admitted to hospital yesterday for planned abdominal surgery. The surgery was successful. And and it is expected that she will remain in the hospital for 10 to 14 days. Then on January 29th, um, the Princess of Wales has returned home to Windsor to continue her recovery from surgery, and she is making good progress. Um, and then there was, of course, the moment in which that photograph um, was released, that we found the photograph had, in fact, been doctored, and there was an apology from the princess herself. Tim, if you will, react now to this moment that we are learning that the princess has been diagnosed with cancer and the road ahead that she has. Well, make no mistake, this is this is a crisis for the royal family. This is a real crisis. We've had marital rifts and family disagreements, haven't we, over the years? But we've now got the king, King Charles, who's 75, we already knew was receiving treatment for cancer. We don't know what type of cancer, but he is receiving treatment for that. Now we find that the future queen, uh, Kate, who's only 42, is also uh, being treated for cancer. So that is a real crisis. I mean, the impact on, on that family uh, is extraordinary. And it's, it's way beyond, in my opinion, uh, all of the sort of controversies and stuff that we've been talking about before. And, of course, although we've seen Kate on camera, although we've had a statement from Kensington Palace, there's still a vacuum of, of information. Um, I'm not suggesting for a moment they should give more detail, but there will now be just as much speculation as before. What type of cancer is it? How serious is it? What's going to happen to the family and so on? So they're really fighting a losing battle in the sense of, of um, keeping the public informed. The other point to make is that Kate is now the most popular member of the royal family, according to the latest polls. So for a lot of people, this is going to be a huge blow. I mean, for me personally, uh, I, I covered uh, the very early days of William and Kate. I remember their first public appearance when she was still in her late 20s. And it's quite, it is really quite shocking. And I think most people will, will feel the same. I'm getting a statement in from Rishi Sunak, Prime Minister of the UK, um, Susanna, that I'd like to read for you um, before we talk. Um, in it, Rishi says this, the Prime Minister says this, my thoughts are with the Princess of Wales, uh, Prince of Wales, the royal family, and in particular, her three children at this difficult time. The Princess of Wales has the love and support of the whole country as she continues her recovery. She has shown tremendous bravery with her statement today. In recent weeks, she has been subjected to intense scrutiny and has been unfairly treated by certain sections of the media around the world and on social media, when it comes to matters of health, like everyone else, she must be afforded the privacy to focus on her treatment and be with her loving family. I know I speak for the whole country in wishing her a full and speedy recovery and look forward to seeing her back in action when she is ready. We talk about, Susanna, and as Tim just mentioned, a crisis for the royal family, but the prime minister said it there, a crisis for her three young children. Yes, and clearly one of the reasons why this is being kept so private is precisely because they need time to learn to adjust them before they become part of worldwide news. And also a crisis for William. He has a father who has cancer, and he has a wife who has cancer. And you can imagine the strain that he must be under. The one date in the midst of the schedule you mentioned that we didn't mention yet is the 27th of February, which was the day when he uh, pulled out of a scheduled appearance. And we were told at the time it was because of a personal matter. Mm -hmm. And Kensington Palace have now said that he pulled out that day because that was the day that it was diagnosed as cancer. It was originally uh, an abdominal surgery that was not thought to be cancerous, as the princess said in her statement, and then later it was recognised that there was cancer and she needed preventative chemotherapy. And whilst I think that 
Tim is right that there will be speculation. This intervention, making this public, at least one hopes, guarantees that it won't be speculation of the vile sort that we have seen recently, which has been conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory circulating with trolls and social media and picking on her in much the same way, of course, as we've seen them pick on Meghan in the past. And now at least, as Rishi Sunak has asked, perhaps there can be a moment of privacy and some sort of sense of respecting a family going through something quite as challenging as having two major members of the family suffering from cancer and going through treatment at the same time. Susanna, I want to make sure that I just heard you correctly uh, before I move forward, because we do want to kind of drill down on what it is that the princess is facing when it comes to her specific diagnosis, which we don't know a lot about. But, but you pointed out that date of February 27th, and I'm looking at my timeline here, and, and you're correct in mentioning that the Prince, Prince William had resumed public engagements after some time off and then subsequently uh, pulled out at the very last minute at a memorial service for um, his godfather. Did you say that you feel as if or you have reporting to indicate that that was the day that they had found out about her cancer diagnosis? That is right. So Kensington Palace have said that the reason he was not at that uh, appearance was because that was the day he was pregnant. So um, the, there is, uh, it was because it says, um, because of the discovery of C Catherine's cancer diagnosis. So that's why he was not at that memorial service. So that gives us a timeline. 17th of January, it was announced that she was having the surgery. As you said earlier, that it was likely that she would remain um, in hospital for 10 to 14 days. And at that time, they were predicting that she would be back in public duties at around now, at the end of March. But then, obviously, they discovered that the cancer had been present and she was advised by head of medical team to take this course of preventative chemotherapy. And that is what she's been doing for the last month.